You perfected your wardrobe. What about the stuff not everybody gets to see? If you've been settling for store-bought underwear five packs, we got something that's going to change your life for the better. Talking about me undies. Now, what is me undies? Oh, just seriously soft, feel-good undies delivered right to your door. They're designed in LA and made from sustainably sourced micromodal, a fabric three times softer than cotton. Softer than soft, luxurious undies come in an ever-changing selection of classic colors, bold shades, and adventurous patterns, so you can tailor your undies to your personal style. And you know what? You can save time and money with a monthly subscription. I've got a few pairs of me undies. Man, they are real comfortable. Every time I work my way through the laundry and I got those me undies there that I'm going to put on my body, ooh, I get real excited because they are comfy. If you're not ready for a subscription, you, that's okay. You can save. This is because me undies is offering you 20% off your first pair. Just use your special URL, meundies.com slash doughboys and get 20% off your first pair. Go ahead, revamp your underwear drawer. You deserve it. I know you. You deserve it. Do something nice for yourself. Try me undies. You never spoil yourself. You're too worried about taking care of other people. You got to take care of you. You're the protagonist of your own life. Make sure you are comfortable. Go to MeUndies.com slash Doughboys. That's right, MeUndies.com slash Doughboys. Hey guys, it's Kelly Nugent from Teen Creeps, the podcast where Lindsay K. Ty and I talk YA pulp fiction. This week we're joined by comedian and podcaster Ryan Mogi from the Buffy the Vampire Slayer podcast, Hellmouthy. We promised we'd get to it. And now it's time. R.L. Stein's Fear Street Saga. Corpse-filled scarecrows, corpse-filled towns, very empty birthday parties. Check it out on feralaudio.com or wherever you get podcasts. Feral Audio. I don't worry about McDonald's, Burger King, or Wendy's. They may be more popular, but a good hamburger sells itself, and I don't think anybody makes as good a hamburger as we do. Those are the confident words of Lovey Yancey, a true trailblazer in the chain restaurant sector. In 1947, at the age of 35, Yancey opened a three-seat burger stand in the Los Angeles neighborhood of Exposition Park, building the eatery with scrap metal provided by her construction worker then-boyfriend. She gave the restaurant its unusual name, one which would briefly become a millstone around its neck during the low-fat diet craze of the 1990s, explaining, quote, I wanted to get across the idea of a big burger with everything on it, a meal in itself. As the chain grew in popularity over the decades, it attracted celebrity clientele like Red Fox and Ray Charles, and a celebrity investor in Los Angeles Laker legend Irvin Magic Johnson, who traded his NBA championship rings for onion rings. With its fat and skinny fries, thick shakes, and loaded burgers, including the pioneering option of a fried egg as a topping, the restaurant became a staple hip-hop reference, receiving shout-outs on tracks from the notorious B.I.G., Ice Cube, and Tupac. As hip-hop culture grew more establishment, its connection to the chain grew more direct. At various points, E-40, Queen Latifah, Kanye West, and Pharrell became business partners and or franchise owners. Now with over 150 locations in 20 countries, count the place dubbed the last great hamburger stand as yet another local SoCal favorite that became an international sensation. This week on Doughboys, Fat Burger. So it's the Doughboys! Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. We're part of feralaudio.com. The best way to support ours and other shows in the network is to use the referral link on our website anytime you shop at Amazon. I'm Nick Weiger, alongside my co-host, Ruth's Chris Christie, Mike Mitchell, the Spoon Man. <laughs> How are you, Mitch? Hey, you're talking about our future vice president of the United States. You think Christie's going to get the, the nominee? I don't know. It's pathetic if he doesn't. I think it's going to be, I think it'll probably be Gingrich. I mean, at this yeah. point, they'll probably be announced by the time this episode's out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but um, well, I'm, I'm as of now, I'm putting, uh, two weeks before release, I'm putting my money on Gingrich. In fact, I actually have money on Gingrich. Yes, that's right. You're betting on politics. I'm betting on now. politics via Predict It, the website. Mm -hmm. um, you can run you up can... your alley, a boring man <laughs> betting on politics. <laughs> I uh, I actually made a hefty profit betting on Scalia to be the next Supreme Court justice to vacate his seat, and when he died, um, I got a cool twenty dollars in my bank account. Oh, great! Yeah, you could celebrate a man's death and... <laughs> for a measly twenty dollars. Well, he wasn't a good man. That's true. He was a bad man. So that's uh, fine. That uh, roast was courtesy of Kyle Jamison. If you have an insult you'd like me to use on Mitch at the top of the show, you email roastspoonman at gmail.com. Go ahead, Mitch. I like the last name. Don't like the roast though. Yeah. Um, 
first of all, I was going to stop you. It was the first time ever I was going to stop one of your introductions for the for the Magic Johnson trading in his rings for onion rings. <laughs> that is the dumbest shit I've ever heard That's in my life. That's because you're a Celtics fan. You're a partisan. You have your biases <sighs> built in. And then also, I don't think I've... It was the most unnatural. I've never heard anyone say "notorious big" more unnaturally than. Oh you. yeah, the notorious big. <laughs> <laughs> it was the dorkiest shit I ever heard. Anyways, howdy ho to Spoon Nation. All right, come on. Howdy ho. Ever see a guy say goodbye to a shoe? Yes, one. <laughs> oh my god. I'm one of the most forward thinking men there is. Yeah! Oh my god. My mom just interrupted the fucking <laughs> drop. This is canonically part of the drop now. Starting over. Okay. Ever see a guy say goodbye to a shoe? Yes, one. <laughs> Oh my god. I'm one of the most forward thinking men there is. Yeah! For all who wish to learn, whatever their color or their creed, there has been a buzz over the city of Quincy and it's coming from the sky. Scott Ackerman. That's it. Great. That's the drop. My mom left a voicemail, too. <laughs> Should we listen to it? Should we roll the dice and listen to what my mom had to say to the guy? Oh, Jesus Christ. What is going on with your phone? <laughs> Do you know how to use this device? <laughs> anyway, that uh, that drop was, uh, was courtesy of... Uh, oh, wait, this isn't the right drop. What the oh, f- Jesus Christ. Oh, no, this is the right drop. That was that drop was uh, courtesy of Joseph Bastion. Uh, his uh, Twitter handle is at zero disorder. Yep. And should we listen to my mom's voicemail that she left? Yeah, sure. Put it on. All right. Well, we might have to edit this out of the episode if it's something weird. And here we go. During the next half hour, so I'll do you Thanks. Love you. Bye-bye. Hmm. Seemed so- innocuous. I seem drunk. <laughs> Do you want to give out your mom's Twitter handle? My mom is not on Twitter. Oh, okay. So, uh, what's going on? Uh, not too much. You know, what we, a clunky start to the this show. This was a this was a mess. What oh, a shit. disaster! <laughs> These devices we have, you know, sometimes they work in your favor, sometimes they don't. My yeah. mom was calling. She's coming to L.A. in uh, in August. Right. So she's planning stuff, and she's hitting me up. And she's here for like seven days. She's coming with a friend, and my sister and my sister's bringing a friend. So that great, it's, yeah. And Let's so get she, the Mitchell family in here. No, get them in studio. Fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a little bit of business to take care of, real quick, Mitch. Before we introduce mm-hmm. our guest, uh, first things first, we want to announce the winner of the Mitch Gump contest. Uh, from a, a couple episodes ago, when we had Paul Shear on for Bubba Gum Shrimp Company, we had a contest to see who could come up with the best. Uh, Meme mashing up Forrest Gump right. and the Spoon Man Mike Mitchell. The winner was Senior Beamer at Mishak Figs. Uh, so congratulations, Senior Beamer. You'll be receiving a souvenir glass from Bubba, Sh- Bubba Gump Shrimp Company. What, who, what was his meme? His his meme was, it was your face with a, pa- a Patriots hat put on top of Forrest Gump sitting on a park bench. And uh, the meme text was, my life is like this box of chocolates. I'm going to end both of them tonight. Oh my God. Insulting, but also like <laughs> very dark. Very on the yeah, very dark, but I think very accurate and a nice combination of these two properties, these two intellectual. Yeah, properties. you you he earned it. Yeah, he earned it. And guess uh, what? We're, we'll sign that glass. Yeah, we'll sign that glass. That'll work. That'll work, right? Yeah, <laughs> you can sign a piece of glassware and something you didn't ask for. Well, I mean, we'll do it with Sharpie. Let's see if it stays on. Maybe we just sign the box, and the box can be of a man. Ah, okay. All right, sure. Yeah, we'll sign the we'll box. We'll figure some shit out. Um, so be expecting that senior beamer. Uh, hey, but. They, yeah, go ahead. They brought up. Uh, well, they brought. I was just gonna say they brought up your the the big Simpsons uh, debate in that in that drop. The uh, yeah, we we don't have. I mean, we that, that's a full hour discussion it. to talk about the Hank Scorpio shoe incident. That's true. Um, but uh, yeah, we can get into that in a bit. But but f- before uh before we go any further, we have a. Uh, I want to briefly bring in a friend of the podcast, 
and uh, Tournament of Champions Commissioner Evan Susser. Wait, what? Oh, um, God damn. We have an important bi- bit of business to go over. He has an announcement oh, no. he wants to make on the podcast that is relevant to what's going to be happening with the sh- <sighs> happening with the show this uh, this coming August. So um, I'm conferencing him in, him in now. He's waiting to board a flight. I'm hoping we can grab him before he gets in the sky. What a treat we get to hear from Evan Susser. <laughs> Hey Evan, oh uh, you're on. Shut you're on with me and Mitch. Off. How are you? I'm good, uh, guys. I'm going to read a brief statement and then I'll take a few questions. Is that okay? Yes. Where is he in the airport bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> which uh, which airport chain restaurant are you at, Evan? I said I'll take the questions at the end. Okay. All right. Go ahead with your statement, Commissioner Susser. Are you buying a seatbelt extender in the airport <laughs> lobby, or are you waiting until you get on the flight? As all of you know, I served as a commissioner during the much beloved and often praised Doughboys Tournament of Champions. Mm-hmm. It was my intention to retire from that position after the championship, as I believed continuing to insert myself into the podcast would appear to be self serving and potentially pathetic. However, with an athletic competition of even greater magnitude than the NCAA tournament set to take place imminently, I have no choice but to intervene and declare a Doughboys counterpart to those games. That's why, starting the first week in August, I'm officially declaring it the 2016 Doe Olympics. Wow. The the 2016 Doe Olympics. Three weeks of competition, bringing together competitors from around the world of chain restaurants. Also, for clarity... And to not be confused with the actual Summer Olympics, the full title will be the Doe Olympic Susser Games. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> okay, is that the is that the, the completion of your statement? That that is the completion of the statement. Yeah, we wouldn't want to get confused with the real Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know they're very they're very litigious. Yeah. The uh, actual Olympic Committee. Yeah, I I think it's a real concern. The uh, Improv Olympic uh, had to change its name to IO because they got sued by the Olympics. So yeah, we we could be. Uh, I, I think it's good to avoid that potential legal hassle. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Susser, I have a question for you. Why? Sure. Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think I was pretty clear that the Olympics are taking place. Yeah? Gotcha. Yeah. So you know. Oh. Like Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Great, all right, good enough. <laughs> That's enough of a, of a flimsy peg for us to hang an entire month of shows on. Um, Have you decided what the fuck the idea is going to be yet or no? <laughs> you know, I think it's pretty obvious. You hear Doughboys, you hear Olympics. I think you just, you know, there's going to be competition. Uh, <laughs> the answer is no, it has not been fully figured out yet, but we're going to get there. It's going to be wild. It's going to be a desperate attempt to recapture what we had with the tournament of champions it's right. probably going to be worse sure but we're going to do it for a long time whether it works or not <laughs> oh, jesus where are you flying to uh i am i'm flying to uh, toronto canada wow for why for yeah. a, a study the of uh, study up on the olympics <laughs> yeah to study you know to prepare i am traveling all over the world uh to get people's ideas for the Stowe Olympics, which may or may not have an international angle or not. We're still kind of figuring it out. <laughs> okay. Jesus Christ. All right. Well, speaking of things we might have to edit out of an episode, I think this entire phone call might be on the chopping block. But uh, Sure. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Evan, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Safe travels uh, uh, to our neighbors in the north. And uh, uh, dine at a chain restaurant there. Uh, bring us back some opinions. I'll stop at a Tim Hortons just for you guys. All right. Oh, that's nice. Take uh, care, Susser. Fuck you, Susser. Bye. All right. Uh, 2016 Dolympics Susser Games coming in August. I'll look uh, for more details on that soon. And I'm just going to say, if you're excited for that, you are a complete fool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's introduce our guest who has been waiting very, very patiently. Uh-huh. Uh, she's a writer for the Boondocks Party over here in Blackish, uh, the great Yamara Taylor. Hi, Yamara. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks for having me. So Thank you're... you for sitting through, <laughs> <laughs> every... first of all, me messing up with my phone, then uh, having to hear an echoey Evan Susser. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. 
Uh, that was delightful. I'm so happy to have heard all that. And your mom sounds so cute. And you call her mom. Uh, I know. It's so I can't fix it. I, I'm trying to fix it. It just doesn't work. You don't have to fix it. It's just how it's you talk. Cute. Yeah. Uh, she was well. I told Nick this. I paid four hundred and fifty dollars for my driver's side mirror to be fixed. Yeah. And I called her, and they, they they this is at the dealership, and they didn't seal it. They didn't they didn't seal the damn. Uh, driver's side mirror. So she might be calling me about that, or she's calling about uh, her visit. Wait, well. you get your mom involved in this? Yeah, because because I, I mean, like, what are you supposed to do? Well, I I don't I'm know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah, sure, I'm a grown man calling my mom. That's embarrassing. <laughs> but I don't know who else to talk to. I, I'm not, I can't talk to the fucking kittens about it at my house. I gotta talk to somebody, you know. <laughs> you have kittens at your house. I got. I have kittens. I have two kittens at my house, and they're hanging around, and they're doing great. Around, like in your house, in or my, just around your house. In my house. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you own. You I have own kittens. two kittens. Okay. Yeah. I took them to the vet today. They were they were great. They're That's doing well. Cute. Yeah. Healthy healthy as ever. Did you, uh, while you were at the vet, did you ask if uh, they can put you down? <laughs> <laughs> ask the vets if they would put me down? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, did I wish. You? I wish it was that easy. No, I do. <laughs> I should. I'll ask next time. Uh, I'll so, go and we're going to have we're gonna have to order some extra tranquilizer. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I'll do. I'll go in, I'll strip my clothes off, and I'll start barking around the floor of the veterinary's office <laughs> and see if they'll put me down. <laughs> I think you can easily pass for for a man sized dog. <laughs> uh, um, you yeah. are you're from L A. I'm from L A. Oh. And where exactly in L A. did you grow up? Yeah, um, Pico Fairfax area. Gotcha. Baldwin ah. Hills area. So growing up in L A. It, you know, it's a big, it's a big food city, yep. and you're something of a foodie now. Yep. You and you and your husband Ryan Meharry are big foodies, I'd yep. say. Um, we talk about food at work a lot. What is your like? What were your food tastes as an Angelino? Oh, tacos. Or right. That right. was a big one. And burgers. Mm -hmm. I think were the two. It is a big burger city. It's a big burger. So city. even but even because there was a there's what we know in Los Angeles as the burger boom. Yeah. Which happened in like 2007 or eight when like there was t like that was like when you mommy came onto the scene and then there was a bunch of different places that like had these kind of like artisan burgers. But oh, the, yeah, but I didn't it do was. Any of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you've never have you been? You've been to like umami and stuff. I've been right? to the, yeah, but yeah. I didn't get into that kind of like gourmet burger until yeah. I was like in my thirties or something. Yeah, and yeah. Growing up in LA, it was just like your burger stand that, that for you could get like a full meal for like two dollars. What is it? There's, is there a Hawkins burger? Right? Is there, there's like these older, like kind of old school burger spots that like I've never been to, but I've heard good things mm -hmm. about. Yeah, there's Hawkins and there's Mo Better Meaty Meat Burgers. Oh, we just went there a couple months ago. It's yeah. really good, and it used to be around the corner from my house when I lived off Pico. Oh, all right. Yeah, and they relocated. So burgers have always been. They've always kind of been one of the big things of LA. I yeah. Think so. Because I think there's like there's a lot of the local chains that have like Fat Burger, which we'll talk about, about in a bit. But there are like these local chains that have gotten big and gone nationwide. But there are also these like local institutions, these sort of shack places. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Long Beach equivalent of Twets in L.A. is like there's there's Dave's Burgers, and it's just like this little shack. Okay. The fr original location is like this little shack that's on the same. Um, the same lot as a gas station, and it would just be like a thirty-person line every every you know lunch hour because it's just you know like a, it's just a place where you can go and get a, a super good loaded char grilled burger mm -hmm. uh, or flame broil burger. And yeah, it is like a thing. I think there's a, like a big LA thing of loading up a burger, mm -hmm. just putting a bunch of shit on it. You like a lot of stuff on a burger. I I get that, and and at, at Fat Burger, which we'll talk about later, Nick. Relax. <laughs> um, you, you you have that option to load up that burger with whatever the hell you want, um, and I like that. I li I say if if it works in the equation, put, put as much stuff as you can on there. I, I, I yeah love yeah. It. Uh, do you like Pink's hot dog? Hot dogs. I know. I feel like Pink's is like one of the things that L.A. is known for. Yeah. I don't love it that much, and I don't even feel like locals like it. <laughs> I had a uh, have a pink hot dog story. Oh, man. Uh, me and my girlfriend went because you know they always have these lines. Yeah. And mm -hmm. So we were had to be maybe like nineteen or twenty, mm -hmm. and so we're like we're gonna go to Pink's and we're gonna get this hot dog and it's gonna be the best. And so we both got chili dogs, and then we didn't have anything to do that night, so we drove up to the Hollywood sign with our chili dogs. We hiked up. We like hopped a fence with chili dogs and hiked up. 
So the Hollywood sign got up there and had to shit so bad. <laughs> <laughs> we, we ate them in the dark, <laughs> like a mountain, and then immediately had to shit. <laughs> and it, they weren't good. Yeah. They were like not delicious and kind of cold. And awful. We were like, what are we doing? Oh, like, so man. Neither of us had boyfriends. <laughs> like, it was like a Saturday night. <laughs> That That's is awesome. a nightmare being stranded when you without access to a ready access to a restroom. Oh yeah, um, we talked about it on here with Jack, the story with me and Jack Allison, where I pulled over to the side of the road. Yes, yeah, yeah. You, he, you told he, the story. On here. Yes, and he uh, laughed and uh, like like one of the weasels from Roger Rabbit yeah. almost, <laughs> almost laughed himself to death at me. Uh, yeah, that is that's an awful experience, yeah. and I, I guess maybe that speaks to to Pink's quality. Maybe well, Pink's whole thing is there because they're like. It's such a triumph of marketing. Like they've got like this huge sign and they've got like this they've set up their line so it will basically always be visible from the street from Fairfax, yeah. right? It's mm-hmm. a very very busy heavily trafficked street. Um but yeah, everything I've never actually been there because everyone I know who's been there has been you've, like, yeah, it's not that good. You've never been to I've Pinks? I've never been to Pinks because oh, every every yeah. impression I've got from anyone I know, especially anyone who likes food is this like, yeah, don't bother. It's not it's not very good. Yeah, they're right. Um for you what we just had the 4th of July. This podcast is going to come a couple weeks after that. Mm-hmm. Um, I drank for a couple days in a row, which I haven't been doing much, and I got myself sick. But I still indulged in plenty of barbecue food. And, and uh, I want to ask, what's your favorite, like, cookout food? Are you, are, do you like, are you, are you like a hamburger or a, I need to have a cheeseburger? Or are you going to do a hot dog? Or are you going to do a sausage on the grill? And Nick, that goes for you too. What's, what's happening? What's popping at your mm. fourth? Hashtag, what's popping at my fourth? Like <laughs> what, 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 do you, what do you like to try? Uh, I feel like if I'm swimming, mm-hmm. I always want a hot dog. For some reason, like water. <laughs> I, I, like, was, I think because when I was a kid, we'd go to the beach all the time, and that's what we would have hot dogs. Mm-hmm. Right. There's always like a little hot dog stand. Um, that is funny. You know what? I, I kind of I feel like a hot dog is like a hot dog is like a, a beach food. Yeah, I, it I is guess, a beach food. Yeah, probably because like there's like clam shacks and hot dog yeah. shacks or something like that. It's it's very much a be- beach food. Yeah, I, I feel like it. I understand the connection. I feel like if we're talking about my grill preferences, mm-hmm. I feel like I want I want a burger off the grill. Like yeah. I, I actually usually like. I actually really like a, you know, just a, a burger with a nice sear on it. I'm not yeah. necessarily always like, oh, I want that barbecue burger. But I feel like if I'm if in the cookout scenario, that's what I tend to be craving. Yeah. Yeah. If I, I'm in someone's backyard, I want a burger. Yeah. I, if, if, if someone's working the if someone's working the grill, I want I want to eat a, a, a grilled cheeseburger at yeah. some point during the day. Um, but it, that, that's it, huh? It's not, no, no, like no shish kebab or something weird for you. No, like, no? I don't oh, have any exotic right. choices. I mean, my my steak uh, or anything like. I mean, like steak is a grill food. Yeah, my, there's not many grill foods. I right? feel like well, like I, if I'm gonna prepare a steak, I will have, and if I'll go to a steakhouse, I'll usually want, go to a place that'll do like a pan sear, like a pan mm-hmm. roasting. Oh, okay. Um, oh. But I think like, huh. but growing up, my dad would always make steaks on the grill outside. Yeah, and so that's how I came uh, accustomed to it. But I really do just like a nice, a nice sear. I mean, you usually get that from that cast iron skillet. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I, what, if, you're, if you're grilling, here's another question. Yeah. You're a gas grill or you do the charcoal or what? Or, or is it even some other weird answer you have? Everything I've heard is that the, the charcoal is superior in terms of flavor, but the mm-hmm. gas grill was always what we had growing up just for the convenience factor. And yeah. I, always li- I always like going with my dad to fill up the propane tank. That was a lot of fun. I you, just went on that oh errand uh, in Kansas with yeah. Ryan. It was the first time I've ever seen that exchange happen. We needed propane. And Yamar, if grow. you were, imagine yourself being a little boy. Do you think you'd be excited <laughs> by this? They just swapped, <laughs> swapped out the tank. They didn't like fill it. Yeah, it's not fun. It's it, it, even, even in the olden days, I guess, when they refilled the tanks. Yeah. It still was not fun. Here's what I liked about it. Mm-hmm. It was like a big, heavy tank that I got to help my dad lift. Aww. And then oh um, my <laughs> <fucking That's adorable. laughs> And then we got to go on an errand together and retrieve the new tank. Again, then I knew when we went home and hooked uh, and hooked it up, we we're probably going to get some something off the grill later. That's very huh. sweet. 
Was your dad using that for cooking, or was he going into a room and just opening that tank? <laughs> my, my father, George Weiger, was not suicidal growing up. Not, And if he had any sort of issues, it certainly wasn't because of his son, which you're no doubt implying. Um, Daddy, let's change the gas in the thing again. <laughs> no, it's already done. <laughs> uh Hold on, I got a reply to Evan Susser sent uh, both of us a very needy text. Did I do bad? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Should I just text him yes? I'm going to text him yes. Oh, All right. I said yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is, that's a, well, what a loser. Um, that's pathetic. Susser. So, okay, so. Can we cancel the games? because? Of that? <laughs> <laughs> so we had, uh, so, you know, cookouts. Uh, burgers, tacos. Let's talk fine dining a little bit because I know oh, you like I to go to a, fine dining. You love to go to All a right. nice restaurant. Uh, what is your favorite like fine dining establishment in the city or in in general? Um, let's do city. Yeah, I want people to go. Sure. And <laughs> eat there. Well, we do have listeners nationwide. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't know. Well, Eleven Madison Park in New York is probably. Maybe one of the best places. I feel like it's one like on a world list somewhere. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Eleven Medicine Park. I feel like Medicine I've heard Park, of it. And you do like an eighteen course dinner, and Damn. it's insane. When's the last time you went there? Last, gosh, maybe like last fall. Gotcha. I think. What you've did you? To, uh, you've been to French Laundry before too, right? You know what? We have. <laughs> we've been to French Laundry for like a. Um, they had like some kind of like tasting event. Mm -hmm. But we have gift cards to fr French Laundry for dinner that we've had for three years that we can't use because you can never get a reservation at French Laundry. Oh, yeah, man. that's crazy. Yeah, that's it's crazy. ridiculous. And so. that's, uh, if you're not familiar with French Laundry, it's Thomas Keller's restaurant. Thomas Keller's the celebrity chef who uh, famously helped prepare the dishes that Pixar animated in Ratatouille. And... Um, He's uh, it, it's like it's supposed to be supposed to be one of the best restaurants in the country. I've never mm -hmm. been. Yeah, um, but it's up in if Napa, not, if, right? If, if, if yeah, if not the world, maybe that makes it onto a world list. I feel like it's way up there. It should be on a world list. Yeah, and, and it's and it's in Napa Valley. To make things even more fancy, it's in Napa Valley. It's like this small little, little cottage. Town. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's pretty there. I've never eaten there. I saw it once. And like a rat in <laughs> Ratatouille, they shoot me away with a broom. <laughs> um, L.A. I like. We're we're at our, we're celebrating our one year anniversary. Oh, um, this coming weekend. Hey, all right. Hey, That's awesome. So we're gonna go to Melise in Santa Monica. Oh, Melise is great. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. I went there for an anniversary dinner with my lovely wife. Uh, the two of us went there and we spent a lot of money. Yeah. It's very expensive, but it's really really good. Um, but you know what? It was one of those meals that was so opulent that I can't even like remember individual courses. Yeah. Mm. Which looking back on it, it's like. Okay, the thing about food, with spending money on food, is it's such an expendable thing. It's such a momentary thing. It's the whole idea of like, oh, spend money on experiences, not um, possessions. Right. Because it's like, oh, that becomes a memory for later on. But like, I, I find when looking back that like a lot of nice meals that I spent a lot of money on, I like don't even remember what I had. Well, which, also, if you're doing wine pairings, you're getting drunk. Yeah, that's the other thing. So yeah. I really don't remember it. I don't know if I've ever done a wine pairing before. Oh, it's so fun. I, I, I should try it. Yeah. Uh, I've get, I mean, I would go by myself and not be able to afford <laughs> it, most likely. Well, you can... A lot of restaurants do it. Even yeah. if it's not offered on the menu, they'll still, like, pair your wine. What is it? Like, you already have, like, three glasses or, or three servings of wine? Or depends on the courses. Yeah, depends oh, okay. on how many courses you're having. Yeah, I've, I've had a... We went to... Uh, have you been to Providence? Yeah, that was like one of the other places we were considering. Yeah, I went to. I've been to Providence, uh, and we got the wine pairings there, and that was like, it should, you know, it was like six or eight courses, and you get a whole glass of wine with each course, and even if it's a half glass, it's still like just a substantial amount of alcohol you're having throughout the meal, and I was just like halfway through, just completely fucked up. Oh yeah, and it's just like it, it's one thing like you go to you think of like oh the classiness of a fine dining establishment, but then it just be like blitz, like you're yeah. basically you might as well be in, in in a shitty Irish dive bar, you know, like and because you're just like blitzed out of your mind, and then you're eating this like sloppily eating this <laughs> caviar over foie gras like super expensive meticulous <laughs> dish in such small portions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't like this mental image of you spilling caviar all over your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've actually never had caviar either, but hey, I'm on the man of the people, baby. Have you ever had roe with sushi? Yes. Okay, I think you basically had the same, same thing. thing. Okay. 
Nah, eh, fuck you. Um, <laughs> uh, here's my question to you. Here, and this is a question to all the listeners, I guess. What um, what would you rather do? Would you rather have a great, great meal at a fancy restaurant, mm. or would you rather have like your favorite meal at maybe a, a, a lower end restaurant? But I mean, yeah. I know that you That's have. That's a good question. I know you have some of your favorite spots. For me, I think uh, a fancy restaurant is always nice, but I hate. I don't like dressing up. I don't like like the idea. Uh, like if I'm on vacation or something, which I never am, so I don't like I uh, like I haven't gone on vacation with my family in years or whatever. But if if I'm on vacation with them and we go out to eat, that's great, and it's it can be really nice. And if the food is really really great, then that that might be the best experience. But I hate dressing up for one. Yeah, and two, like if if like I can just think of some of my favorite foods back home, and I'm just like man. Like pizzeria, going to Pizzeria Regina in, in the North End, like that might be like my favorite experience out of all uh, yeah. out of all of it. You know what I mean? What do you think, yeah. Yamara? I I think I would <laughs> I would probably choose the fancy meal, right? Just because it's a, such a f- I love dressing up. Yes, like all I want to do is dress up. I want to see other people dressed up, and I like the mousse bouche. I like all the little parts of that meal, mm-hmm. and yeah. I like getting drunk. And I like that when you get drunk on good quality wine, you're not hungover the next day, so it's kind of okay. Mm-hmm. Like I like I like the whole experience, so I think I would do that because because if it's my favorite meal, mm-hmm. I'm gonna have that. Like I've had it a lot, and yeah. I'm gonna have it again. Right? Yeah, I think there's there's also too that's like it's more of a special occasion to go and and you know unless you're super rich, you're not having like these fine dining yeah. experiences yeah. all the time. Exactly. It's what it like every other month maybe you know it's not like a super frequent dining experience versus like it you know a sloppy slice of uh, a za you can get basically whenever you want mm-hmm. yeah um but yeah let us know what you think i uh, use a hashtag uh food snob or food slob oh god <laughs> That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was fine. I think it met the threshold of fine, which is all this podcast ever needs yeah, to be. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, our podcast is just fine. If we're not embarrassing ourselves, we're succeeding. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know about that. I think we've, <laughs> we've embarrassed ourselves multiple times over on this podcast. Um, let's so let's get into Fat Burger a little bit. Okay. So uh, when did you start? Ha- when when did you? Oh, start- so wait, hold one yeah, second. Go for, it, go for it. You just you steamrolled my car issues at the beginning of the show, and I just if anyone out there has any car advice for me. <laughs> Because I can't be talking to my mom about this. Tweet at me. I'll, I'll tweet out a picture of my car, but fuck you for not helping me out. Do you I need, not have a mechanic? I because I, I I bought a car from the dealership, so I've been stuck with like I had a deal with them forever uh-huh. for like the last four years. Right now it's over with finally, so I can go to another place. But I, I was I, I was stuck with them for a long time, and ugh, the mirror is just a weird thing. You've it, had a lot of issues with this car because you've had it yes. for a while, and you've had a lot of mechanical. I've, I've problems. I've had a lot of mechanical problems, and I bought it from that place, so mm-hmm. that, that was a part of the issue. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. My, my dad has passed away. I don't know who to talk to about car stuff anymore. No, you know, like our parents' generation, like I feel like every guy knew how to work on a car. I don't yeah, know they know the how to turn I'm a wrench. Doing. Yeah, yeah they There's know how also to turn this a feeling that your mom that. can fix everything. I feel like sure. Yeah. Like, I I call my mom for stuff. I get it. Like as soon as something goes wrong, I think I call her. Yeah, you're supposed to call. You're, that's what they're there for. You're supposed to it. call mommy as long as you can. <laughs> right? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I'm not pathetic, right? Just not no. for, like, you don't have to call your mom because you dropped some fruit snacks on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a major life issue, you know I think what? it's fine. <laughs> She'll get under the hood when she comes out here in August. <laughs> yeah. You think your mom is going to single-handedly fix your car? Sure. Personally? I sure. Went, I went to uh, lunch with my brother a few years ago, and it was just he and I, and a cap on his tooth. He took a bite of something and cap on his tooth fell off, and he um. immediately called his girlfriend. I was like, I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many do you, do you have? Just the one brother? No, I have four older brothers and oh, older man. sister. Yeah. Wait, so you're the baby? I'm the baby. Oh my god! Yeah. How was that? Did that? Did that? My question, because I, I I just had an older sister. Okay. And if you have that many older brothers and sisters, are you like when you're having family meals and stuff like that? Are you getting like the it's the bottom scraps. of the barrel shit? Yeah. I learned to eat really fast because when they finish their food, they move on to my food. Right. So I, I, like, inhale food. I have to, like, make myself chew. Oh, man. Yeah. Do, do you still, like, did that, does that affect your eating habits nowadays? Yeah, because I just, I'm, like, full way before I know I'm full because I'm right. just inhaling it. You're just wolfing it down. Yeah, so instinct. I had to start doing intuitive eating where you, like, 
mindfully eat your food and stop when you're full. Like I read a book about it and just started practicing that and it helped. But just, we just ate and I inhaled my meal. I don't, I don't think I chewed. <laughs> <laughs> so what were what were dinners like in your house growing up? Like what was like a what would be the average like family dinner night? Um, well, we all didn't live together at the same time. Like mm-hmm. my sister's 14 years older than me and she okay. didn't live with us. Um, and then one of my brothers is like 10 years older than me and he didn't live with us. Okay. So I think like with three brothers and me and then my mom, just chaos. It was just everybody in and out right. of the kitchen. Like it was never like it, we got called to mealtime, mm-hmm. but everybody like that we either like all sat down because we wanted to hang out a little bit because everybody's like 18 months apart. Um, or we'd all take our plate and go to the television and where everybody went to their separate room and stuff like that. What what shows were you watching at, uh, oh. when you were eating dinner? Because I, I have a couple. Really? Yeah. Uh, we were watching, it was usually Sundays. Mm-hmm. It was like in Living Color and The Simpsons oh, and man. Tracy Allman. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that Sunday lineup so, so yeah. well. It was, it was great. a great lineup. It was a great lineup. Do you remember that um, that TV show that was like the black dad and the white mom? And what he was, was a dentist. I can't remember was the it name on of Fox? it. It was on Fox. And huh. he was it was like around the Herman head Herman's head oh, yeah. era. He was a dentist? He was like a black dentist and he had a white wife. I think it was it called True Colors? It was something like that. Oh maybe. The True Colors sounds very familiar. It, it sounds True like Colors. the name of a show. Yeah. It I was the whole premise was just Herman's like, head I sound like married a black man. <laughs> <laughs> Herman's head which the premise was he has people inside of his yeah. head. And but it wasn't Lisa Simpson on that, was yeah, it? Yeah, yearly, yearly. Yeah, yeah. Yearly Smith. Smith. She yearly was Smith. the she but she wasn't in his head. Mm-hmm. She was the secretary You're in the right. real world. And then inside his head was I don't I don't remember any of the actors. Oh, okay. Oh. But I do know that my Cub Scout troop Oh, uh, as a fundraiser, uh-huh. I didn't attend, but my, as a Cub Scout, this was a, a common fundraiser in, in Southern California. You, Mar, you may have experienced this, is rounding up like you're the, the baseball team or the Boy Scout troop and taking them to a TV taping. Oh, yeah. And then they'll pay, the production company will pay like 40 bucks a head for every person you bring because they just need warm bodies in the audience yeah. to, you know, have the, the audience reactions. So the, my Cub Scout pack went to go see a taping of Herman's head. Oh my god. And um <laughs> you you and the other Cub Scouts went to a taping of Herman's I head. I didn't go to this one. I did go to the Family Feud taping, but I did not go to the Herman's head <laughs> Why taping. Why did you go to the Herman's head taping? That's a great story. I think I could I just like I I don't I think I could, the schedule didn't work. I don't know. I don't remember. I just know that I wasn't able to attend this, but I did hear the story from my dad who did attend that the fat guy Where did your dad go? I don't my dad, I have an older brother. <laughs> oh, okay. I took my older brother. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my dad didn't go with a bunch of scouts yeah. and yeah. not me. <laughs> that wasn't what my childhood your was. Your dad was wearing one of those classic Wagger spinny hats that gets you guys <laughs> into all your little adventures. <laughs> he, he uh, but they went to uh, they went to the Herman's Heads taping, uh-huh. and there was like a fat guy in Herman's head. I don't mm-hmm. remember what his yeah. role was. Yeah, I remember him. Uh, uh, he, well, he's not listening. He was um, <laughs> was he anger? Probably he was like it was yeah it was whatever the whatever's an inside out was the same thing yeah it was Herman's head inside out. Herman's head is just inside it's out inside out with a man yeah with inside out man. really yeah it's basically it yeah um but anyway so like the fat guy in that this is not a great story I don't know why I went down this road <laughs> <laughs> my the thing my dad told me was that was uh, the the standout was that a fat guy was supposed to burp and then he couldn't burp. Oh, so he had to like he had to so depressing. He had to keep drinking sprites like before each take, and they'd have to do the whole scene. He was supposed to burp at a certain cue, and he just couldn't deliver. And this like group of children were sitting there waiting for the fat guy to burp. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I feel his pain, whoever he is. Such a thing of like you're like a theater. You like go to act. You know, uh, you get your MFA in fine arts. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Or you get your MFA in theater, and then you you end up like being the fat guy. Burping on a sitcom. <laughs> um, Wait, well, I want to hear what people because a, a big one for me on a on a nightly basis was Jeopardy, right? And that was that, and we would just watch that as a family, and oh, I would get every cute. single question wrong, like I still do. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but um, if hit us up uh, hashtag TV dinner, I want to know what your oh, uh, that's a good one. Yeah, very well played. Thank you. Um, we didn't. We never watched TV during dinner. We always just sat at the at the dining table. In you silence. guys have a lot to yeah. talk about. <laughs> we uh, chatty. I do. You know what? I do have a chatty family. Oh, I'm kind good. of the quiet, uh, the quiet youngest son. 
Dad, and, tell the Herman head story. Again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my my mom and dad and brother are very very boisterous. Oh, oh wow! Yeah. I did not expect that. That's funny. Yeah, so I sort of just like internalized all that and became an observer. <laughs> oh, cool! <laughs> I think I did the same thing. I think I'm more of an observer. Well, let's get back into. Sorry for t- taking us off on this wild tangent. Uh, let's get into Fat Burger, shall we? Yeah, I mean, this podcast is known for its laser focus on the <laughs> topics. So, uh, uh, all right, so Fat Burger. So, Yamara, when did you when did you first go to Fat Burger? Because for, for me, like, I didn't go until I moved to L.A. Uh-huh. I think they, they are in the... Maybe they weren't when I was growing up in the Long Beach Lakewood area. There there might have been some, but I like it wasn't a place I knew about until I I got into uh until I actually moved to the LA city limits and now they're they here they're kind of ubiquitous. Right. Uh my brothers and sister, like I I had my love affair with food was basically through them. Like they would go to all these cool. So they were like older, so to me any place they ate was cool in a weird right. way mm-hmm. and they would get to come home with takeout, but I had to eat like our normal food that my mom cooked for us. So they would come home with Fat Burger, and it was always just me like, can I get a bite? Yeah. <laughs> like, you guys didn't get me anything. Like they never brought me anything. So yeah. every now and then they would treat me and bring me like a Fat Burger and some fat fries. And like, um, so I can't remember specifically when I had it, but I know probably like 12. Gotcha. 12, 13. All right. Yeah. What's your standard order from a fat burger? Like, what's your what's your favorite thing to get there? Uh, what I got today, a charbroiled turkey burger. I used to get it with egg, mm-hmm. everything on it, no onions, and fat fries. They do do a good turkey burger. They do a good turkey burger. Because I feel like there's a lot of, the, there was that turkey yeah. burger period when it was like, oh, turkey burgers are mm-hmm. healthier. And then they kind of just sort of became an alternative to beef because now they're, I think, nutritionally, people kind of consider them equivalent. But mm-hmm. it's one of the places where I think... It's worth it to get a turkey burger just on, on just for a, a difference in flavor. That's actually, it, it's like a well done one. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's not it's like not a dry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, places they, you'll get the turkey burger, and it's just like a less good beef burger. They do they do a good job. The turkey burgers are not. I've had the turkey burgers a couple times. And yeah, they, they are I don't not feel like dry. I'm missing out on anything. Their yeah. veggie burgers are really good. Yeah, I've heard that as well. I've yeah. never had their veggie. People burger. rave about their about their veggie burgers. Fat burger's good, you guys. A fat burger. Is good. I agree with that, and I will hold a lot of thoughts on it. But I really, really enjoy Fat Burger. Yeah. Um, and also, it's funny to me that it's just called Fat Burger. Yes. Yeah. Which is a funny name, and this this Yancey lady is was is a right? Was it Yancey? Yancey. I think her first name was Lovey. Her last name's Yancey. Oh, Yancey. What a yeah. Cute yeah. Name. Miss Yancey is does a a great. She did a great like to make that burger stand mm-hmm. like. What, seven, 60, 70 years ago or whatever it was? Yeah, 47, 69 okay. years ago. Yeah, th- that that's th- that's an impressive to name it Fat Burger. Off the, well, it was always called Fat Burger? Yeah, so I, w- I looked up the, the name a little bit, and she she explained that it was, as I said in the intro, she explained it was because it was like a burger that was so filled with uh, filled with everything that it would be like an, a meal in and of itself. Um, but it was originally named Mr. Fat Burger. Oh. And she went into business with her boyfriend, and then they split up, and she just uh, went out on her own, dropped the mister, and it was just became Fat Burger. And oh, it's I kind of like sense. that, too. She yeah. dropped the mister. She dropped the mister. That's great. <laughs> that's very funny. Is, that's like her version of Hollywood land. Yeah. <laughs> the land. Well, like the it's like the mister was up there, and then the rocketeer uh, flew into <laughs> yeah. the mister part of the sign and just made it into Fat Burger. Oh. And then he continued on and knocked over the land part of the Hollywood land. <laughs> Sign. Uh, I'm sure that was a great Cub Scout trip when you went and saw that movie. Uh, Mr. Fat Burger's pretty good too. So even when they dropped it, uh, the, she did. She, that's a great job for for something that's almost 70 years, about to be 70 years old. It really is a thing because I remember. I, I I don't think I've told this on the the podcast before, but I remember talking with you about Fat Burger previously, Mitch, and that I first learned about it via a news report. Like I, I huh. they they had like a report on the I, I don't remember the exact specifics of it, but it was one of those local news stories where they were like Fat Burger is the talk of L A. You know, and, mm-hmm. and it was just like a local news report. And I thought it was a new place. I didn't realize it was like this long established place that they were doing sort of just like a color piece on. Um, but I remember the name being like funny. I was like Fat Burger. Like what? Like Fat Burger? Because <laughs> yeah. like fat was this the nineties. Uh, 
fat was like so unhealthy mm-hmm. and so not anything you'd want to have associated yeah. with your food. We were it just like, figuring out what fat was then. Around yeah, exactly. Time. And it's like it's like, but it's like unless in, it was pH fat, which is also big. <laughs> yeah, pH fat was big around that time. <laughs> hey, I, I also remember around that time uh, is when skinny fries came out. When when Fat Burger did skinny fries. Yeah, because the, they've got the fat fries and the skinny fries, and there's a big difference between like the fat Huge. fries. I think are like four to eight times thicker than the skinny fries. Delightful mm-hmm. steak fries. Is how I describe them. Well, there's a lot of talk about that. Sp- yes, specifically, I'm going to quickly say that uh, my introduction to Fat Burger was from the "Today Was a Good Day" from Ice Cube. I I did not. The, the, he in that song he sings about f- uh, three in the morning got the Fat Burger. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And so I I had never. I'm an East Coast guy. I'd never I and I knew that song. I didn't really know what it, I knew. It was just like a, a West Coast California chain, mm-hmm. so I had never tried it. But I liked Ice Cube, and I was I was interested in it. And then when I came out here, I was like, "Oh, Fat Burger!" I think yeah. I actually didn't know if it was pH or or F or even. I think maybe even at one point I was like, "Oh, he's just talking about like he got that fat." I think I maybe I even thought it was like a sexual term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Or or, or if it was like like a thing where he just went and got like a big a big fat juicy burger somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like I, I didn't know. I didn't know what it meant, but I was, I was excited when I like came out here. I was like, "Oh, this is an actual chain where you can eat a fat burger," <laughs> and, and, and 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 that's that that is all my my history with it. And coming yeah. out here it was like all, In and Out Burger was like the 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 thing that you heard people talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and when I tried Fat Burger. I like it more than I like In and Out Burger. Wow. Me too. I wow. like Fat Me Burger too. more than I like In and Out Burger. These it's are a heartier burger. These are very strong opinions. I, uh, I really think I like Fat Burger more. It's 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 what it's so this was too much to drop maybe right off the bat, but it's so it's very, very good. It's really good. I I can understand someone liking it more than In and Out Burger, even though I disagree. Mm-hmm. Uh but it is like In and Out Burger is such like kind of a pristinely composed burger especially if you get like one of their double doubles or their che- like it's like a really well constructed sort of burger and i feel like the fat burger is such as like a sloppy pile but mm-hmm. it's but it is very very tasty so they're they're kind of different experiences i think they're also like a, the fat burger is a little bit more expensive I mean, it's more like a like a six or seven dollar burger versus like a three or four dollar burger. Yes, it's a little bit of a price difference there. The burger. Okay, so also. It doesn't mean the whole restaurant is better than In and Out Burger, relax, because <laughs> right. that's another side of it too. But steak fries at Fat Burger are so good. They're so good. And when they're done, like when and and it's like one of the few places where you can get big, yeah, fat fries, steak fries that are cooked well. That are, and you, yeah, you can't get that any like anywhere. Yeah, at, like, they like, do like, tend to get stuck. <laughs> In your throat sometimes. They're super starchy. <laughs> They're so, thick. so I think that both of you, the both of you, prefer the, the thicker fry to a skinnier fry, just yes. in general. I, I, it depends on where the fry is from. Gotcha. I don't think Fat Burger does a good skinny fry. Oh, it's interesting. Like too, there's something about it that's like too crispy. It's like the difference between a Burger King fry and mm-hmm. a McDonald's fry. Yeah. And I feel like like Burger King fries to me are just not good. They're not like I like a wiry, kind of floppy fry. Yeah, sure. You know? yes. These ones are these ones are more stick like. They're you like stick like, like, yeah. like pick up sticky fry. Like, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I like their fat fries, but oh, I just no. here's the thing. Oh, I don't like it. steak fries <laughs> in general are too thick and too starchy. I, I have you have to eat them one at a time. I like the part, like, one, okay. part of what I like about fries. You can pick up a few at once and have them at once. So when I'm at Fat Burger, I'll opt for the skinny fries. My wife, oh, God damn it, my wife Liger. disagrees with me. She goes with the fat fries. <laughs> And that's fine. It's okay for people to have differences of opinions, but I'm just saying I would usually go skinny. Here's the thing. The thing with this with this fries being over starchy, I don't that's why I like the fat burger fries, because they're not too over starchy to me. Like I feel like I feel like they're very crispy, but they're, they're like crispy. not super packed with yeah, like potato. Like that's I, like exactly what it is. Yeah. It's not like this sort of thing of like the the texture of it and the crunch is yeah. so good. And I'm not like it's not like biting into like a potato bite or sure. like a pota- like there there there's none of that feeling. Like it still feels like a French fry. You to can me. reach in that bag and you can get a very hearty thick fry, mm-hmm. but that's not too starchy, mm-hmm. but still like hearty. Or you could reach in like usually towards the bottom of the bag, and you'll get like a nice kind of hollow crisp fry. Oh, those yeah. are my favorite. And those are the best. Those 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 little the little 
fry cocoons yeah. are the best version of them. That The ones at the bottom of the bag that are kind of like... Like a lot of the potato is gone and yeah. it's just this greasy shell. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a greasy shell. <laughs> That's kind of, I think, part of the delight of an order of fries. It's kind of like the the mixed jelly bean phenomenon, mm-hmm. but a much more muted version of it, of like mm-hmm. you never quite know what you're going to get. And mm-hmm. sometimes you get those perfect ones that are like, oh, yeah, this is great. And so you're, they're all going to be fries, but sometimes mm-hmm. you get those ones that are just like the right combination of salt and crispness and oil and, and potato, and they, they just come out so perfectly that they're just like... It, it's the same sort of thing when you're eating a sandwich and you just get like, a, if you get two or three perfect bites, yeah. you're just like, oh, man, this is what it's all about. Can I tell you the... Best fries that I've had recently, cactus tacos. Really, they have um, an amazing fry. It's wow. really good. I, I was, it was really? unexpected. Yes, just regular oh, fries. And they just do, regular they do, fries. Do, are they are they not thicker? Are they? Uh, are they're they... like, they're not very thick. They're like they're they're bigger than the fat burger skinny fry. Right, mm-hmm. but they're smaller than the fat burger fat fry, and they're like long, and there's like some softness to them, so gotcha. you can grab a few. And then dunk them in some catch. It, they're so good, and they give you like this big container of them. I've right. never, it's amazing. I've, I've never, I've had the uh, California burrito at uh, at Cactus, which has fries in it. Ooh. But I've never done, I've never done like a side order of fries. I just before. got a side order of fries at like midnight, and it was like so satisfying. Man, wow. Cactus is so. It's one of my favorite places in it's place. LA. It's, it's so good. On. Yeah. People sleep on it. When we're, so we should announce too that we're going. We're going to be at Comic Con, right? Can, okay. Should we announce that? Wait, we can do that, right? Yeah, but I think by the time this episode's out, by the right, time cool. this episode's out, it will have already happened. I think. Yeah. Right. It, no. Will Will it really? Wait. Hold on. It's in August, isn't it? Oh no! Wait. It's. Oh, um, <laughs> you're right. It's. It, it yeah. Is, no. It's, it's in July. Be over. It's like next week. Or it's oh, like in, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, you know what, Mitch? This episode will come out the same day. I'm looking at my calendar. This episode will be released the same day as the panel. Hey, get your ass over to Comic Con. <laughs> <laughs> if you're quick, if you're just learning now, you're if you're at Comic Con, get to Hall H by two fifteen p.m. If you're listening to this the day, the day this release, we'll be there getting asked zero questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there sitting quietly while everyone uh, uh, asks Dan Harmon about uh, Harmon Town and about community. And Weiger will wander off into the Rogue One room. Or <laughs> uh, but there's there's a California burrito place on the way down there. That uh, you and I are gonna have to try. It's really good. I don't uh, know if there's any spots in San Diego either, but yeah, tweet at us. I guess if, since we're down there, tweet at us on some, some sort of sure. local San Diego spots. Yeah, get us some get some some San Diego spots. Hashtag San Diego spots. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I didn't feel like putting any effort into that. Oh my god! Let's man. get you know what? I think our I think our intern Yu Song, uh, who's out there. Hi, Yu Song. He's waving. Yeah. I think we should give him the task of just. Uh, Ha- just being on deck with uh, hashtags. Yeah. When, when our brains aren't working, which is most of the time. He just buried his head into the couch. <laughs> <laughs> he, he already he already feels so demeaned at this job and for us to give him another task. It's a fun, creative <laughs> job. When I was when I was at The Simpsons, they let me tweet as Homer a couple times. Did they really? Ooh. Yeah. It, it, and it was, Did it go well? What, what kind of joke do you have, you no, fucking asshole? I mean, that explains why Homer was so upset about Deflategate. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking asshole! Uh, I thought you were gonna insult my intelligence, so I'm, I'm happy you didn't. Um, oh, that would that, that would have been a better angle. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> why does Homer seem extra dumb? <laughs> All right, great. I'm glad you worked it out. Uh, yeah, I got to tweet as Homer a couple times. So this is like that for you, you song. It's gonna be great. He's leaving. He quit. <laughs> Storming out. He stormed out of the room. Oh well. Back, um, to, back to Cornell for him. Um, let's get into our meal a little bit. Okay. So uh, also, just go a, for it, go one, for one last quick side note. In that drop I played, there was a weird thing about Quincy, and I got I to find out what that meant because I'm going to forget if I don't mention it now. Where we was talking about oh, the, was a there's news a, report. a news report about Quincy. Whoever, yeah. whoever tweeted, whoever whoever's dropped that was explain explain what was happening. I think there. that was viral marketing for Independence Day resurgence. Wait, really? Yeah, I think there was a there's a strange buzz over Quincy, and it turns out to be you know how like in the uh, in the movie which you've seen that the aliens come down and they're like uh, we gotta erase this shit stain from the earth. <laughs> And they immediately uh, nuke Quincy, and then all of America cheers. They're like hero aliens, and then but then they turn on everyone else, and they're like, oh no, Weiger, uh, 
Quincy's a beautiful place. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, that movie, I don't know if you've seen the new Independence Day. I have not. Oh, my dear God. Is it bad? Listen, it's not. I don't even care about it. I, I didn't even care about it going in, but it may have been the worst block, like big blockbuster movie I've ever seen in my entire life. It didn't wow. make. It didn't even make any. Like it was conf- weird and confusing and so bad. It felt like it felt like Starship Troopers like five or something. Right. Wow. It felt like it, it, it like it it was it was it was so bafflingly bad and and weird. Like direct to video caliber. Direct to video caliber. Wow. Yeah. People were so mean to Batman vs Superman. Can I just say, I, I I hate to get into this again. It's not that movie's not that bad. I'm a, I'm a BBS defender. You fell asleep. I fell asleep. Well, it is like I'm three a parakeet. Hours. I fall asleep as soon as it goes dark. Right. Really? Uh, yeah. Any theater, I can't help it. I think I'm not gonna I do. Brian thinks I do. I, think you I might. fall asleep anywhere. <laughs> That that would because I love movies. That would drive me nuts. Yeah. I, I love I love going to the movies. That's one of my favorite things to do uh, on the shitty earth. And uh, I in this movie I would have rather fallen asleep through. But people, I think Independence Day maybe has a better Rotten Tomato score than fucking Batman vs Superman. People people were too harsh on BVS. I, I think it's very it's it's a uh, little it drags a little bit. It's a little boring, but it's very watchable. You're not winning any action. points by calling it BVS. <laughs> <laughs> I think it sounds cool. Um, all right, oh, cool. Let's talk about Fat Burger a little bit. Uh, so we the three of us went together before this recording session. Uh, we met at the uh, with one of the Burbank locations, um, and uh, uh, I feel like the service there is. I mean, it's counter service, yeah. but they're always friendly, and they bring mm. you your meal to your table. I've never had a bad experience with a service at a fat burger. I feel like they always do a good job. Yeah, I, I've been to so many different ones around town yeah. and at different times of the day. Right. It depends, but like right after I had Reagan, I was faced with the drive through by my mom's house. She lives in Baldwin Hills, and yeah. there's a fat burger there, the Magic Johnson one. Mm-hmm. And so we went through the drive through and normally they wear gloves to like... To, to do your lettuce and tomato and stuff and the girl wasn't wearing gloves and it freaked me out for oh, some boy, reason. Oh boy, yeah. Huh. I just like, and I like <laughs> stayed in the line and didn't know what to do because it was like, I, I I pulled it through like the the prism of having a kid so I'm like, I have to stand up for my burger because if this were my kid then like, what would I do? If, right. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. like, I like just sat there for a while and then accepted the burger and said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and then on, That's on what I would have done. <laughs> yeah. And on the way home, I was like, man, I let Reagan down. I'm never going to stand up for I let a stranger disrespect my food. So I called. And I, like, very meekly was like, oh, excuse me. They weren't wearing gloves. And they gave me, <laughs> they gave me a coupon. <laughs> <laughs> that worked out. Yeah. Did, so. and did wait? Did did Reagan eat this, or was this your own? No, burger? she was like, she was like six months old. She oh, okay. Care, you were thinking ahead though to a future scenario yeah, where this like, happened. Oh. Where it's like, because because we tend to like just let strangers get away with bad behavior, right? Uh-huh. And it's like, well, if I can't do that anymore because I'm a parent. Yeah. Mm. So now I have to like. So this was like my first like I got to stand up for myself. This is where I start. And that was the cause I chose. Yeah. Like me with my kittens, but way more serious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can. Yeah, you can map it over kittens. Yeah, I would give the sure. burger to them still. Um, I, I so here's an issue with Fat Burger. Go for it. Is that they're all individually owned, right? Uh, I yeah, I think they're. This, I mean, I think they're franchised. They're fran- they are but, franchised. But it is, but isn't there a weird thing with this? Is what I've has always been explained to me is that the reason why there can be a really bad Fat Burger. Is because each of them are like individually owned. Oh, they're individually owned and operated. Yes. So they don't have like a, the parent company isn't like very hands on with each location. Yes, that's that's right. that's what I've heard okay. before. And so there can be there can be good fat burgers and there can be pretty bad fat burgers. But I'll tell you, the one we walked into tonight didn't look like the best fat burger. Right. For sure, it it it, it looked like uh, on the level of good and bad fat burgers it was uh it was it was a it was a dumpy one i would say closer to the dumpy side right sure they had no remember they had no salt and pepper in their shakers yes yeah they had it, fakers they were all decoys <laughs> and it seemed a little sticky on the floor it was sticky on the yeah floor. yeah it wasn't the clean I, I mean that's the thing i think i think separating the service from the atmosphere cuz they're not always the cleanest establishment they're not no right the the floors were Say as sticky as a teenage Nick Weiger's floor. <laughs> I think I was jacking off onto my floor. 
kind of monster do you think I am? Also, it makes me think you grew up with like laminated floors or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so probably I'm more putting accurate. down plastic because I'm just dropping cum loads all the time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, I, this one was. It, well, you got to admit it was. A, it felt a little bit. On the on, like a, not not a great fat yeah I got gotcha. you it's fine yeah. it's fine we also went in like end of the day yeah so they could yeah. have just given up at like four yeah they may have given up yeah yeah um still the food was very very good yes mm-hmm. well let's let's get into what we we each got yep um so I got the I usually opt for a burger there mm-hmm. um I got something which I don't normally have because just a couple weeks ago actually I had had a fat burger and so I have a very recent uh, memory of 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 one of those. Um, but I got a, this visit, I got a crispy chicken sandwich with cheese, um, which is their fried chicken sandwich. I got, and I got a, an order of onion rings and also an order of chili cheese skinny fries. And then for my, sh- my drink, I asked for a recommendation on a shake. And the guy said his favorite shake was the chocolate Maui banana shake, um, which was a, a sort of a alchemist concoction. It's not officially on the menu. Uh, but can I also uh, say that that was yeah. weird that you asked for a, for a shake recommendation? Why is that weird? Oh, there's like six shakes. Just Employees pay- <laughs> have their favorites. I asked him what his favorite was. And then he gave you the equivalent of like a like like a Coke and orange like orange soda mixed together. I think he was that's- trying to be cool and give you like a secret menu item or yeah, something. I yeah. I think that's fine. Yeah, yes, I don't know. Because I, I feel like though I feel like employees will usually be food service employees will usually be fairly candid in terms of what's good and what's bad if yeah. you if you press them on it because um, they don't want you to have a bad experience. So mm-hmm. like I I've heard people I, they'll just say like uh, all right maybe get this instead. You know what I commend yeah. you for it's fair to ask. I Jesus ask what Christ. I ask um, a server <laughs> I don't ask what's good anymore yeah I ask what do people get the most of oh okay mm. yeah. you know what the issue that sometimes I have with that though is that they'll steer you towards kind of the especially if you're like at a uh, if you're at like a like a popular restaurant they'll sometimes steer you towards like a very sugary cocktail oh, or something because that's like what's popular yeah, like oh sure. everyone loves this thing this is our most popular item and then you'll have it and be like oh this is a little too sweet for that's me true. so that's a good point um, yeah I, I, but I mean, you can have su- some success with that uh, what do you think of the shake it's a real good shake. I mean, I thought it was real good. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was, it was real good. good. I it tasted good. it. I didn't taste a lot of banana, but I also only took a small sample. Yeah, it wasn't heavy on the banana. I think they're a mix. They, it might have been more chocolate than banana, and I usually will prefer a vanilla shake to a, a chocolate shake, but they do a good shake there. I'll, I'll, if, I'm, if I'm itching for a shake and a mm-hmm. burger combo, I think Fat Burger is a good place to turn to. I will say this. Yeah. Um, and... Hopefully, to not anger the the ghost of Harambe, but I don't like banana in my chocolate. I like to keep them separate. <laughs> Wait a minute! Wait a minute! You you, you 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 prefix that with so as not to anger the ghost of Harambe, the girl at the Cincinnati Zoo that was killed with a sniper rifle. Yeah, so you're tweeting what? about all the time. I thought that you would maybe. <laughs> so at this point, something that will have happened. Two months ago. <laughs> Wait, what was the one who was just killed the other day? That was Bantu, the, the gorilla died. Oh, Bantu. I, I thought you meant the alligator. I don't oh, think no. the, gr- yeah, the alligator got the killed. The zoos, what's going on with zoos? Zoos Every, are fucking yeah. crazy. Everything's going crazy. I saw a baboon escaped. But no, you, you don't have to worry about angering the ghost of Harambe <laughs> because because you don't like bananas. What? Well, I have an intellectual. I just want to cover that. all my bases. That's all. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't like the banana mixed in with. Right. Especially if it's like blended. I don't know. I don't. I don't need the banana taste. So you don't like a banana in peanut butter situation. I like a banana. I like a banana with some peanut butter on it. What about right. strawberry and banana? <sighs> yeah, the, the, a strawberry banana smoothie is kind of different to me. I, I don't like to specifically get the banana in my chocolate. I feel like it. Uh, like a. A strawberry banana is is decent, but I feel like they complement each other better. I feel like with with like I wouldn't want to put it in a vanilla shake, like yeah. a strawberry vanilla shake. But stra- uh, uh, banana and chocolate, uh, you think it, they don't mix? Yeah, I just feel I feel, I feel like I'm tasting two different things. Like, right? Yeah. So you don't do banana splits? I don't do banana. My sister and my mom love banana sm- splits, and I I never really ate banana splits growing up. Got it. But like. Even that's a little different though too, because don't you just get like a little piece of banana and then there's a little whipped banana. Cream it depends and... on how you eat your split. I think splits can be good. How are you supposed to eat your split? I don't know. I think it's different for everyone. I don't eat a lot of splits. <laughs> yeah. <so. laughs> how do you feel about a chocolate covered banana? 
Ooh, I've never had one. Really? Oh, nope. No, thank you. See? Really? I no, like thank a, you. I, I don't want a chocolate-covered banana. You know, out there, let us know what you think about combining chocolate and banana. Uh, if you like bananas, hashtag go bananas. <laughs> and uh, if you don't like bananas, hashtag no bananas. <laughs> oh, my God. Thanks to you, Song, for the assist on that one. <laughs> He held up. He held up a a, a a whiteboard to the window outside our studio. <laughs> Don't blame that <laughs> terrible hashtag on you, song. God. Um. Uh. Yamara, what did you have at the fat burger? I had a charbroiled turkey burger. I had everything on it but onions. I had cheese on it. I had it on a gluten free bun. Yes. Uh. And I got some fat fries. And I got a diet coke. How'd I got a coke zero. How'd everything come out for you? Good. I was happy. I was pleasantly surprised by the gluten free bread. Yeah. What was the was texture like on that? It looked looked good. Very yeah, good. Yeah. It was. I was fine. shocked. It was like <laughs> <laughs> like I love the softness of a real bun. Of course. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But it was fine. Like it didn't dilute the experience for me. Like it was mm-hmm. better than just going protein burger. Right. I felt like. Yeah. I mean, like I. I Gluten-free bread is very hit and miss. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you can, I mean, that one, like, I think the, the honestly, the look test matters a lot for that. Because that looked yeah. pretty in- indistinguishable from the sponge dough uh, buns, which they normally have. And Fat Burger has really good buns. Like, they their normal buns, buns are very tasty. I like I like Fat Burger buns a lot. I, yeah. It, but it's not maybe my favorite part of the burger. So I, I went off on the tangent of saying I, I love fat burger more than I that I like in and out burger but yeah. I have more thoughts on the burger as a whole right. too I just so I got I got the I got the large fat burger which is a decent sized burger with cheese and I got all the toppings on it and that's what is that that's tomato lettuce onion relish Mayo, pickles, the works, and yeah, the works, and, and mustard. I believe. I'm amazed that, that you have that all committed to memory. I think that's what it is. Or wait, yeah. you're, you're reading that off of a tattoo on your arm, memento <laughs> style. <laughs> um, I I love the burger meat in the fat burger. It's mm-hmm. it's so good. It is really it good. Is that good. to me is a burger. Yeah, and yeah. your in and out fucking burger patties. Sure, they're good. Yeah, but that fat burger, like. That's what a fucking burger is. And they to don't me. look per- they're not like perfectly shaped either. No. Like. They look they almost look like you made it at home. Sure. Yeah. Truly. And and it has like the nice crispness from the grill. Mm-hmm. It looks so good. And, and I got cheese on mine. I was just I was looking at it and it looked it it it's it's a burger to me more so than than it, than In-N-Out is. In-N-Out is just a different thing. It, it's still a burger, don't yeah. get me wrong. It's just it feels kind of like a little like California, I, like this is our California kind of yeah. style, and yeah. I think Fat Burgers where the party's at. I think In and Out is more business casual. That's okay. what I say. I like okay. Yeah, I think that's a good yes. Yeah. You know what? That kind of squares with me and Mitch's personalities. <laughs> I'd say I'm a business casual guy, and Mitch is a total party animal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! Uh, <laughs> we're both losers there, <laughs> eating burgers in the end. Uh, I got that, and I got myself some fat fries because I'm with you, Mara, on the fries. You got to go fat when you're a fair burger. You got to go fat yeah, fries. Fat. I, I, I think you're completely wrong in this case. Look, I'll say that I'm I'm in the minority here. I prefer the skinny fries, but I would say for anyone out there, for your maiden fat burger experience, yeah, go with the fat fries. I mean, that's what they're known for. I that's think what you might just not like fries because you like In and Out burger fries. What the fuck are you talking oh, you about? Like I don't like fries. I do. I like their fries. How do you? I don't like fries because I have different <laughs> tastes in fries than you. Oh my god, <laughs> that's insane. That's this is so the thing that got you the most mad. I'm just. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I don't like fries. How could you think I don't like fries oh based on my taste in chain different chains fry preparations? <laughs> I love fries. I've never oh heard God. Nick yell before. I look when I get a steak. Here's how much I like fries. They're like bake. You want baked potato, mashed potato? I say, can I get fries? I get fried chicken. They say you you want you want mashed potatoes. And it's like how about some fries or some potato wedges? Okay, it's my so favorite potato fries. preparation. <laughs> Jesus. So your proof that you like fries is that you order fries. Yes, I like. Yes, I think that's proof enough. <laughs> fine, you have bad taste in fries. <laughs> I have different taste in fries. All right, fine. How do you like your fries at In-N-Out? Fry light. 
Uh, I, yeah, I just get the no. I get the normal fry. I don't. I don't yeah. worry about getting the the uh, fries well or fried uh, uh, extra well or fried light. Any variation, I just get them as they come, and I, I think they're fine. You, I maybe add a little bit of salt because I mm-hmm. like my fries salty. But you I think lo- and you love chili fries too. I do love chili fries. Big you, chili fries. Fan. Natalie is rubbed off on you because she's a big chili fry fan, and, and yeah, and uh, yeah, it seems like you like them too. Yeah, that's probably the uh, uh, the one part of our marriage that is. Definitely working. <laughs> so we both like chili fries. Um, no, I got the I got the chili cheese skinny fries today, mm-hmm. and those are really good. I and mean, they do a really good sort of just like dense meaty chili there. Ooh. It's just like a really at, at at Fat Burger. It's just like I'm not sure if I love the chili, which is an option to get it on your burger. It. So you can get you can get a you can get a egg or bacon or chili on your burger. Yeah, and or you're, all three. you're you're a big you're a big or all three. You can get all of them. You're a big egg fan on your burger right? I like you, egg on my burker yeah, yeah. Nick, Nick and I were talking we're, we're not as big on egg but they do it well at fat burger they, they do about the restaurant because it's like it's not as we we're saying at, during our meal they don't give you like this over easy egg where you're getting yolk everywhere it's like mm-hmm. a it's like an over medium egg that's like well cooked mm-hmm. and so you're getting that egg flavor but you're not getting just like a bunch of runny yolk that's going to get all over your hands and totally disrupt your burger mm-hmm. yeah it's not going to make your burger soggy yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, and that's and 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 I, and I and I like it. It just it went and then when it it's that funny thing because I don't like a like runny yolk all over my burger. Right. But then when you do cook an egg through, it is kind of like, well, what am I? What? Why? Why am I eating this thing? It it, it kind of tastes like, like it's hard to even pick up sometimes yeah. the taste of it. I will say it's the I used to always get it. Like every time I went to Fat Burger, I'd get an egg on my burger, and I've mm-hmm. kind of like I think just because every place started doing it, I've kind of gotten less into having an egg on a burger these days. But I, I think it's a place where they do it really well. Yeah. It feels like I I used to do it all the time, and it started to feel very decadent. Yes. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't need the extra calorie of like yeah. an egg on my burger. I'm already getting like a big burger. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, th- so the chili there, it's like a, it's like this very meaty sort of chili. It's very similar to the Tommy's chili. Uh, Tommy's mm-hmm. the chain we reviewed with with Jim Woods. It's that kind of uh, uh, just very very dense, um, uh, super favorite. thick ch- meaty chili. Yeah, I mean it, it's a lot. Uh, the onion rings I think are great, They're and I think I think they just do a fantastic job. They they make them fresh every day. Uh-huh. Uh, they hand bread them in store, and yeah, they're they're really really good. The first two onion rings I had, they were kind of like the thinner ones at the front, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, these aren't that good. And I remember these being good, and then I had one of the big thicker ones at the back, and it was really really good. And yeah. I think I just had kind of two of the the skimpier not as good ones at the, right. at, at, in my first taste cuz the runs of the litter. Yeah. I think Fat Burger was my first onion ring. I think I, I didn't I grew up not liking onions. Yeah. And onion rings seemed gross and I remember like a piece of an onion ring getting stuck in my fries. Yeah. And that was like at Fat Burger, and that was my introduction to onion. I think I did, or I like tried my mom's or something. I was like, oh, this is a nice taste combination. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, Fat Burger. I remember onion rings. The, I think the first time I ever had onion rings were with fish and chips. Oh, interesting. Back home, that's like it, like a a fish and chips platter back home usually comes with like fried fish and then French fries and onion rings. They'll throw a few oh. on there. Mm-hmm. I would say that if they're well done. I sometimes like fries more than onion rings. Not always. I could have fries more often, but a really like a well done onion, an, an ordinary onion. Wait, are ring. You, did you mean to flip that? You like onion rings more than fries? That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Okay. If they're that, sorry, I got to flip my head. Yes. If if I like if they're well prepared onion rings, I'll take onion rings over fries sometimes. Not every time. I'll have fries more often, but I like onion rings. I never a lot. think to order an onion ring. Hold on a second. You, you just flipped out on me like crazy because I said you don't like fries. I do like fries. I just sometimes <laughs> prefer <laughs> onion rings. I know we, we determined that. Jesus. I don't. It does something doesn't have to be my. Fl- <sighs> you know what? I will always prefer fries over onion. Rings, yes, I think. What do you uh, What do you think out there? Uh, if you like If you like rings, uh, use hashtag I'm with Sonic. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and and it went for the fries, you loser. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't like if you don't like onion rings, uh use the hashtag uh I'm with Dr. Robotnik. <laughs> no, that doesn't I knew you were gonna say that. Dr. Robotnik doesn't hate the gold rings. Does he? I don't know. He's trying to stop Sonic, who loves rings. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> I think the math works out. Um, all right, let's get to our final thoughts on Fat Burger. Fair. Uh, so here's <laughs> so here's how this will work. Uh, Yamara, we'll go around. We'll sort of give our closing argument, our overall assessment of the chain, and then give it a fork rating from one to five forks. Okay. We'll start with you. 
Uh, I am a huge Fat Burger fan. I think it, it's very nostalgic for me. Mm-hmm. I'm always gonna go. It's a very, it's a thing I can crave in the middle of the night and know it'll be there. Yeah. I think the food, what I order, is wonderful. Um, I think they do a good burger. I love the fat fry. I haven't had the milkshakes, uh, but yours was tasty. Yes. And I think as an overall establishment, I think like it really depends on what time of night you're going. <laughs> I think if you get your 2 a.m. fat burger, like you're going to get your 2 a.m. fat burger experience. Right. Like certain people are going to be in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, never had a problem with it besides the lady that didn't use gloves. Um, and then as far as my fork rating, how many forks do I get? One to five. I'm going to give it a, this is tough. For nostalgic sake, nostalgia's sake, I'll give it a, f- can I do a four and a half? Yes, you okay. absolutely can. I'm do four and a half. Four forks, wow. two times. Yeah. Very good four score. Four and a half. Great score. Yeah. Go ahead, bitch. If you're going to Fat Burger at three in the morning, which Ice Cube was, th- then you're going to have a great Fat Burger experience, mm-hmm. especially if you've been drinking a little bit, because it, it's it's really really good. And especially also, if you're off the high of having scored a triple double in a pickup game. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? There was too many highs in that song. He, yeah. There was too much good stuff going on. You should have saw it coming. You should have saw the end coming. <laughs> <laughs> three in the morning, the Fat Burger. That like that that alone to me is a good day. So I don't know how he got all that other stuff that he sang about in the song going on. It's a really great, that's a great day. Yeah. Yeah. You should retitle that. Um, <laughs> speaking of Ice Cube, um, I uh, he would be proud because uh, I got a lot of his namesake in my ice cold lemonade. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> And I wanted to point that out because their lemonade is fantastic. Yeah, they they, they do a really good. It's it's. I think is it it's, not just like Country Time Lemonade. No, I, I think it. I think it's. I think it's in house lemonade, mm-hmm. and and it's in one of those little uh, the little cooler the little fountain buckets that we all love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Um, it's really really good, and they got slices of lemon uh, floating in there. Their their lemonade is is fantastic. Um, I love Fat Burger. I didn't, and I I, I made that clear early on. But here's the thing with Fat Burger. And I like it, but it's a very, if you get everything on it, the experience is kind of like a, it's kind of like a pickly, relishy experience. They mm. put a lot of yeah. relish on there. They put a lot of pickles on there. I love that, but that might turn some people off. But here's the deal. It doesn't turn me off. I enjoy it. And my testament to Fat Burger is that I've been trying to diet and I should have done it tonight, but, and Nick, you know of this. Fat Burger is one of my go-to spots yes. when I'm when I'm when I'm when I'm dieting and on eating keto, and I'm I'm not doing any carbs, and you, I have nowhere ever everywhere else is closed. Going and getting like a fat burger patty or a, or one of the a couple turkey patties, mm-hmm. it's so good. The beef is so well done. That grill, I know it's a big greasy grill, but they they fry it up really nice on there, and just the quality of the meat is so good. And the cheese and like that to me, that is a burger to me. Yes. And I genuinely do not to troll you. I do like it better than In-N-Out. I don't think that it gets the respect that In-N-Out gets. And it's kind of confusing to me. I don't understand why people don't really respect it. And and, and, like maybe because In-N-Out is like a little like, I don't know. I I think In-N-Out has more because In-N-Out is like known to be like a very good company that treats their employees very well. Like they have other things going for it. I think people just don't, I don't know. I think they don't think about, it's like Astro Burger. Yeah. Like people don't think to go to Astro Burger. Sure. Yeah. They'll go, you'll go in and out Fat Burger. And then if you know about it, Astro Burger. So I feel like in and out just has so much going for it that got it known by more people. Are people going to think I'm crazy for thinking Fat Burger <laughs> is better than in and out I that... think it's probably an opinion a lot of people who are familiar with both have. Yeah. Yes. I don't think people are going to think you're crazy. I don't think you're crazy. I disagree with you, but I don't think you're crazy. It's just that that big fat, that fat burger patty is so tasty and yeah. so good. And it's just a testament to it, eating that alone with no bun is is so good. And and I, I and the shakes are good and the fr- I love the fat fries and... I I had got, I got to give it five stars. I think. Wow. Five forks. I think <laughs> five rings. <laughs> um, I I I think that I think that a hit on it is something that we talked about earlier. Of like sometimes the quality of a fat burger can be different between sure. locations. But if if you're getting if you're getting the best fat burger that there is, it's it's usually pretty great. And I usually don't have a bad experience with fat burger. Yeah. So. 
That's a great score. Uh, now, Mitch, think for a second. Mm -hmm. Because I, you said your opinion. You 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 put down In and Out Burger, my beloved In and Out Burger, my favorite fast food restaurant, neck and neck with Del Taco. And you said you preferred Fat Burger. Think of how insane you would become if instead of me just sort of politely saying like I I hear your opinion and I respect it and I disagree, I'd said. Uh, what? You don't like hamburgers. <laughs> and I just thrown that in your face and made you defend yourself <laughs> with this bullshit argument. But you like in and out fries that are that are known to not be good. They're good fries. Not, they're, they're known to not be as well liked as some other fries, but mm -hmm. they're good fries. By the way, that's my lemonade shaking in the background. I'm sorry. That's all right. I... I, I, it's just confusing me that that you would you would go to Fat Burger and you wouldn't get the fat fries. I like the fat fries. I like the skinny fries more. Okay. And I like Fat Burger. Fat Burger is really good. It always delivers. Uh, it, I'd say I've I've generally had a consistent experience. Maybe the number of maybe I've only been to well uh, operated Fat Burgers, and maybe I, I've I've dodged some of the. Uh, ones that are a little bit less consistent, but I've always had a good fat burger experience. Um, I love the toppings. I I do love the works. I get what you're saying, Mitch, that it can be kind of overwhelming with all the the different uh, produce that you get on there. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's it's nicely combined, especially if you add some more protein elements, like you add the cheese, you add some bacon, you add some chili, you add some you add the egg. Maybe they have great bacon there. They too. have really good bacon. Yeah. I think if you load it up a little bit with some more protein, it balances out with all those veggies. And I think they kind of anticipate people doing that, which is kind of why they. Uh, throw all that stuff on there, but also you can customize it. Like a Five Guys, you can customize it. The difference is, opposed to Five Guys, they actually have a default burger that they'll give yes. you. Yes, and um, I mean they they kind of have that at Five Guys. They kind of have you know your normal thing you can check off, but it, it, it's it's a little bit different. Uh, the crispy chicken sandwich was very impressive. It was really well done, really crispy uh, skin, really moist, uh, well breaded, well balanced, uh, great with the cheese. Just, just a very, very good chicken sandwich, um, and that's a, that's a thing. Like you know, I think that's a, that's a testament to just the overall quality of the food there. It's like a, it's like good food. Uh, I agree with you on the burger patty. Really well prepared. Love. I, I enjoy their fries. I enjoy their shakes. I enjoy everything about it. And I think I am going to say, it's just shy. Of the perfection that is in an out burger, but it's still very, very good. I will also give it four and a half forks, four forks, two tines. That means that Fat Burger is in the Golden Plate Club. Ooh. It is also uh, not in the hand holding club, but it is. It's in, in a two. It's it's a two person hand holding club. It's two person hand holding club, and also it's in the Ballpark Buds Club. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, uh, in addition to make to my comment about yes. that burger. Mm -hmm. I forgot that one thing I really like about it is that you can pick different sizes of burgers. Yes. yes. Which I think is cool. That's uh, very cool. The, the location I'm used to going to has a baby fat burger, which is a very small, it's like this big. Oh, yeah. You don't see my fingers, but they're, they look... <laughs> Are making a small burger. They circle. look like a small, yes. It's yeah. just a small burger. <laughs> <laughs> and you feel like wimpy in Popeye eating it because yeah. it's so little, and you're just like, I oh, gladly pay you Monday for a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> you're just eating this little burger. Also, their lettuce is great. Good lettuce, yeah. They, I like a shredded lettuce. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I also like that they have chili peppers. Yeah, it makes yes. me feel like I'm at a burger stand yeah. instead of a burger restaurant. Yes. Yeah, all I those like elements are great. Also, too, you know, you can go big there. You can get like that King Burger, which mm -hmm. is which is which is huge, very very massive, and and outstretches outside the the limits of the bun. Yeah, Fat Burger is great. Check it out. And they're everywhere. They're they're in California, but they're also in uh, Pakistan. They're in <laughs> Dubai. They're, they're in, in they're in Victorville, where we drove to the fucking uh, to buy Steak and Shake with Sasser. Yeah. yeah. They're, and they're they're all over Canada. Apparently, a lot of them in. Canada. So, um, uh, by the way, we, give, uh, it a, give it a shot. If there's ever a Popeyes reboot, reboot, it's probably gonna come down to you and I for the role of Wimpy. Is my guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so uh, in we talked about Herman's head and Weiger's head. Uh, yes, Fat Burger. It, it 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 does the job, huh? It just doesn't get it to the. It, <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to. Okay. I, I just wanted to see what was inside Weiger's head. If there were, if, if it was like Herman's head, what was what would be in Weiger's head? Weiger's head would be uh, like Herman's head or inside out, except instead of uh, four different warring types, it would be four very relaxed guys like me, <laughs> all sort of nodding in agreement. Like we're on the same page. Oh my Everything's God, fine. That's terrifying. All right, it's time by, for the, by the way. I yeah. just want to say you could give it five forks. And also given an out five forks, but yeah, I get. 
I think it's close to Five Forks. I don't think it's quite the level okay. of perfection that's fair, that's fair. Of, of, the, of things that we put. It in just the sounded like you were comparing club. it to In and Out a lot. So that's 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 all. Well, no, I like both places. Let's leave it at that. Oh Jesus! <laughs> all right, I got under his skin today. That's yeah. for sure. Uh, we've got a food stuff, and we're going to determine if it's worth putting in your mouth. It's snack or whack. Uh, so what we've got today is something that my wife Natalie secured for us: banana Twinkies. Hmm. Now I've only had. I'm a Twinkie fan. Yamara, you like Twinkies? I I can't remember. I haven't had one in so long. Oh wow, it's been a while. So this <laughs> will be a, a this will be something of a throwback for you, although with okay. a little bit of English on it. Um, Mitch, what about you? Are you a Twinkie man? You know, I, I didn't eat them a bunch when I was younger, but I'd have one every so often, and they're fine. There you didn't go. They almost go out of business. Hostess had yeah. some financial problems, but their brands were so strong that I think some angel investors stepped in and rescued the company. You song out there, how do you? Uh, what do you think about Twinkies? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Big thumbs up for you, song. Two, Two thumbs, thumbs up. up. Oh, oh wow. okay. Wow. Right. It smells. It smells like banana pound cake. Is that what a Twinkie normally smells like? Um, it doesn't have as much banana to it. Yeah, this is. I mean, visually, this looks identical to a conventional Twinkie. Wait, have you? Have, did you, this is a banana Twinkie. This is a banana Twinkie. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is this this is we're doing snack or whack with a banana Twinkie. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Oh, okay. Did, did I, I never introduce that? Did you, Did you say it was a banana he, Twinkie? Yeah. I said oh, banana. Oh, Twinkie. you did. Oh, okay. All right. I didn't realize you said banana Twinkie. No, you just zoned out. Oh, All good. Right. Um. Ooh, the the ghost of Harambe will be happy. <laughs> Here we go. Hmm. I don't know, you guys. Okay. Oh, gross. There's a weird aftertaste. It is really weird. It is like, Ugh. it smells like banana, and it has a banana aftertaste. Ugh. This is like my banana and chocolate yeah. sort of thing. It doesn't it, smell good. Hmm. Very artificial. I mean, Twinkies are already artificial, but the introduction of a usually fresh ingredient banana that is so... Clearly, like a chemical equivalent of it. Yeah. Yamara has it is, is done with her. I, so it's, it's I on took the, yeah. a sm very small bite and then threw it away. Oh man, I'm that's eating it. I want good. a Twinkie. I just want a Twinkie. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Because we, Yamara, we were talking a little bit about all the Oreo variants before the before the show, and there's some Oreo variants I prefer to conventional Oreos, mm -hmm. but. I feel like you have, in terms of justifying the existence of a of a variant flavor, would I take this in any circumstance over the default? I don't see how I would with this banana Twinkie. It is just like the banana flavor is really weird. The aftertaste, I agree, is very very unsettling, uh -huh. and it just it kind of also doesn't sync up with the with the Twinkie cream. I don't know. This is this is a whack for me. I, I, what about you guys? I just I think I found out what my issue with mixing bananas in with stuff huh. is that if I'm not eating the actual banana it's like has so much of that just like it smells like a banana peel or right. something oh, so much of yeah. the smell of banana is like because when you eat banana like the taste isn't really overpowering it's like the smell I, I feel like the smell of banana is more over is like sure more yeah, powerful I, I than the taste of it and so uh, with this it's like Eating, having that banana taste, I'm just like, what? Like, it tastes like I'm eating a banana peel. It doesn't taste like I'm eating, like, artificial okay. banana flavor is fucking nasty. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather have, like, a banana pudding over this. This with the cakey texture, it just... Also, too, That's a great... That is a thing I do, I like, a, <clears throat> a banana pudding with, like, vanilla wafers in yes. it or something. That, oh, that's good. That's amazing. But that, like, is... You have chunks of banana in it, and it's, like, vanilla, and, there, and, 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 and it works well. This well, does not work well. It doesn't, this work, doesn't well. work well. And also, instead of the like, instead of the banana dough, why not have like a banana cream, like a normal that's dough? That's what and I a thought it was going to be, like yeah. a regular Twinkie with banana cream. Yes, that's but right. you know that's... they they say that Twinkies are going to be like Twinkies and cockroaches are like the last things that are going to yeah. be alive on Earth. Famously loaded with preservatives. <laughs> why is why are Twinkies the fat guy joke? I don't Cause know because they're because they're because they're they're like little cakes cake fingers. Yeah. Little, like, <laughs> they just, it looks like someone would put each one on each finger and then just suck them off their fingers. And that's how ridiculous they'd be. They're roughly the size of one of Mitch's giant fingers. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> now I'm going to feel self conscious in the photo. <laughs> I'll be have I'll have my hands in a fist. And it will be, the fist will be going into Wagner's face. <laughs> <laughs> we need to, we do need to, we need to duke it out. Yeah. 
It's it's about time. I feel like that almost happened over that French fry thing. I think so too. Yeah, maybe that's really what bad. maybe that's what Susser is uh, alluding to with the uh, Olympic Susser Games. <laughs> He's just going to be uh, overseeing a pit fight between the two of us, <laughs> which I will be soundly defeated by a man twice my size. <laughs> Uh, whack. That's it's, <laughs> yeah. I say whack. It was it was bad. Yeah, yeah whack all bad. around. I didn't even eat mine. Um, boy, what a disappointment. Uh, what what is there a flavor you could do with Twinkies that's not banana? That would be like a strawberry or what? Like, is there something? I don't know. I think Twinkies are kind of okay, but kind of bad too. I, yeah. I the yeah. one I do like is the Chocodile, which is functionally like a chocolate covered Twinkie. Uh huh. Um, that's pretty good. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, if I'm going to have a Twinkie, give me a Twinkie. Don't give me this banana shit. I feel like strawberry, the, if it was like a strawberry cake. Yeah. Like, that would work. Like, you were saying this should be, like, banana cream. Yes. If the cake was kind of like a straw, like little bits of strawberry or that something. That might help it. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. know. It wasn't good. Well, anyway, uh, deal with that shit, Ghost of Harambe. <laughs> we don't like your banana Twinkies. <laughs> All right. See, uh, that's what I wanted out of you. You, you hate Harambe. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just like a restaurant, we value your feedback. Let's open up the feedback. Today's email comes to us from Cam Carter, a.k.a. at Cam Carter 2010. Cam writes, Thanks to y'all, I have derailed two diets this year, and I'm sure that my future holds a myocardial infarction for me. As a public health educator, I should abhor your podcast, but I can't stop binging it on my days off. That all said, I think it's time to take drinks out of the cooler and off the sideline because I want to know if y'all have a chain you go to that has their soda game on. I'm back and forth mm. between Austin and Dallas and drop into Whataburger sometimes just because they have the best Dr. Pepper. There's an extra something in there aside from the extra syrup. Do y'all have a specific chain or location of a chain that puts some love and care into their sodas that stands out noticeably? Any thoughts? Can't wait to hear your thoughts on Rogue One. Um, Yamara, anything uh, come to mind as a as a chain that has a standout soda fountain? Oh, you know what? I grew up with McDonald's, their orange drink. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> their orange drink is just good. They I do guess. have a very solid orange drink yeah. there. Also, too, on the McDonald's front, I we, think... We, we talked about this the other day. I know yeah. what you're about to say. They have a good... Mc, McDonald's has good Cokes. They have a great... Co McDonald's has a great Coca-Cola. I think they've got they some just... sort of backdoor deal with the Coca-Cola Corporation to, like, get us the good syrup. and Because, like, their McDonald's Cokes, I think, are... And there's a McDonald's right next to a Carl's Jr. near our new our newish apartment, and the the cokes from the McDonald's are just better. They mm. don't taste as syrupy. Yeah, there's something with it. We we were talking about this just the other day. Like, I don't know if it's the 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 ice ratio or whatever it is, but McDonald's cokes to me uh, always taste the best of any fast food chain. I don't understand why. Do you guys like Coke over Pepsi? I'm a huge Coke over Pepsi guy. Really? Yeah. I'm a Pepsi over Coke. Are you really? Really? I am. Yamara, I know. Coke you is so spicy. Gonna, you, I wish you brought this up 90 <laughs> minutes ago. We, oh, we but I got kicked out on my Wait, time did, you, <laughs> did, you, did you say that Coke is spicy? Coke is spicy. It, like, burns. Wow. Earth? I'll drink it. I just had a, a Coke Zero, which I like. The Cherry Coke Zero is amazing. Cherry Coke Zero is is great. It, it's a I great feel like invention. I'm just tasting Cherry Coke. Right. Like, I'm it, suspicious of it. It's it's. I, I mean, it's probably killing us, because I drink it, too. Yeah. I, like, it, I, there's... When you drink it, I'm like, there's something wrong there's with something this. There's something wrong. It's too good. I'm yeah. really suspicious of the chemicals and that. Yeah, it's probably not good. You know, there was that makes me think there was a uh, there the fat burger I used to go to used to be right next to a Rubio's, and in the Rubio's there was a time when they had a fountain that dispensed vanilla Coke, Ooh. and it was the only vanilla Coke fountain I'd ever seen. But uh, it was really good. Like that was like I would. I would like go to the fat burger, be, get my drink from that Rubio's because that vanilla Coke was really, really tasty. We talked about this before, but I, I, I will, I like it when you get like a, a real vanilla Coke or a real cherry Coke yeah, more yeah, yeah. so. And, but I will say like, I know that like all about the bread and a few, and a, a few other, like, uh, I'll give it credit to five guys cause they have one too. They have the. That, which we brought up on the the podcast before, but they have the Coke All Star or whatever the hell yeah. the machines are. What are they called? Oh, those cool machines. The three hundred and sixty yeah. machines. Yeah, or they whatever. got the iPad. They're like freestyle, maybe. Oh, okay, yes, that's I what don't know what they're called. Co like the, yeah, work. the freestyle machines. <laughs> they're like they're big hal sized computers that have like a, an iPad on them, and they can give you any sort of flavor concoction. Yeah, you know what? That if if a place has that, I'm always excited to see it because those are pretty consistently mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. like, yes. The computer has just figured out the, the the carbonation to syrup ratio. But besides that, I'd say Taco Bell always has its drink game on because it, yeah. it has a lot of cool creations. 
But Coca-Cola and McDonald's, for whatever reason, I think that is like my one where I'm like, that it tastes like they really do great with the sodas the, 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 or the, specifically the Coke. Yeah. 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 I think they know what makes their food taste good. Oh, <laughs> right. yeah. They have it down to a science. Yeah, they know like all the shit. You know what is a big thing for drinks for me? Because I, I, a lot of times, most of the time, I think I'll go for iced tea. Just try to try to save some sugar on that beverage. Um, if I'm really feeling like indulging, I'll, I'll get a, a full sugar soda. But I'll usually go for the iced tea, maybe with a splash of lemonade in it. If I go to a place that has, like you were talking about the the uh, house brewed lemonade, if I go to a place that has some like fresh brewed iced tea, yeah. I will always like that over the place that has like the Gold Peak iced tea machine, yeah. where it's a yeah. little bit more, you know, just sort of a a, a processed. Uh, like that's never as exciting of an iced tea. I, I, like a, like a good iced tea, I will I will always be excited to encounter. Um, but yeah, as far as big chains go, I don't know. I think McDonald's is what comes to mind. McDonald's yeah, does it do for me. Good, they could do a good soda. They do a good soda and a good fry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they just have they just gonna have that consistency down. I guess that's part of the thing of the economies of scale. Pepsi. You like Pepsi <laughs> better like than Coke? I like Pepsi. Really? Yeah, I do. Steam is coming out I, of Mitch's ears. Yeah, I, I mean, do. I don't. What, I, did, I, did, I, I like Pepsi when I when I was like when I was younger. I I was like, oh, I like Pepsi too. Right. But Coca Cola Classic is just so. I get what you're saying now. When, when you're saying spicy, it's like yeah. Coke has almost like a lot of people will say like it tastes like almost like cinnamon or something, right? Mm-hmm. Like people people have said that about Coca Cola before. That has kind of like a cinnamony taste or something. It. I get more air with Coca Cola. Mm-hmm. See, that's why I like it. It's kind of more bubbly, right? Yeah. And Pepsi is kind of a uh, is more syrupy to me. Pepsi reminds me of Dr Pepper, and I really like Dr Pepper. Oh, interesting. Yeah. See, a Coke reminds me of Dr. Pepper. Interesting. Is, is, Dr., is Dr. Pepper a Coke or Pepsi product? I don't. I think Dr. Pepper is out on its own. I think it's a lone gun. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I, I like Dr. Pepper a lot. Actually, Dr. Pepper used to be my favorite full sugar soda. Uh, interesting, that's called the Pepper Soda Sector. Although there's oh. all those ripoffs that are all like, like very Mr. different. Pibbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are all the. That's the Pepper Soda Sector. Um, but the. Um, uh, I, we were a Pepsi family growing up, and then when I started to go out on my own, I first gravitated towards RC Cola. I was a Royal Crown Cola guy for a time, oh my and th- God. then later I became, <laughs> I settled into uh, Coke, and now I'm just a Coke guy, but I appreciate a Pepsi. I like a good Pepsi. Pepsi, it's not bad. I just, I think Coke is, you get a rum and Coke, you know what I mean? Like, Coke sure. goes well with other yeah, stuff. Yeah, I don't like rum and Cokes. Oh, man. I don't, I don't, yeah. I just will, I'll get a Coke Zero, do a Diet Coke. Because most places don't have like a diet Pepsi. Have you guys ever had Damn. expired soda? No. Yes, it's awful. It's really bad. Like my my grandma, my my lovely grandma, uh, she had some sodas just in her fridge and never drank some, but just had them in case any company comes by. And you know, we were there once and like, oh, I'll have one of these diet Pepsis she's got in there. And I started to drink it, and it was just like it tasted like pool water Ew. like salty pool water oh, and Jesus i was like what the Christ. what the fuck is wrong with this and then i turned it over and it expired like two years oh. earlier i was like jesus christ my grandfather kept mountain dew in, <laughs> in his fridge and like you know how bad mountain dew is for you by now yeah right? it's awful it's mm-hmm. like drinking nitrogen yeah <laughs> just this old 80 year old guy that would drink like four a day sure when oh, we yeah. come over there as kids and down them and it's like oh that was terrible i love <laughs> they're that. so good <laughs> So good. I love that. I will never make it to 80, but if I do, I'm going to be drinking some Mountain Dews. I'm sure of it. Um, (laughs) You'll be joining Harambe in hell soon enough. (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) What is Dr. Pepper? Is it a, it's a pepper soda? It's a pepper soda, yeah. It's very strange to me. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what it is. Did you yell at your grandma like you yelled at me about the fries? No, I didn't yell at my grandma. All right, I politely poured it down the sink and then we discarded threw the, the rest of the. So no, you threw the I, rest away? Yeah, we threw the rest away oh, of her. Good. Yeah. Um, if you've got a question or comment about the world of chain restaurants, you can email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail.com. Check out our Facebook page, Doughboys. Follow us on Twitter at doughboyspod. If you have a free second, rate and review us on iTunes. Yamara Taylor, thank you so much Thanks for joining for us. Me. Thank you for coming. Um, this was great. We're going to have to get you back based only on your preference of Pepsi to Coke. I'll, go, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do a taste test and I'll do a blind taste test. I'll have Ryan set up a blind taste test for me. All right. And I'll give you some like honest feedback. A whole oh, right. Pepsi challenge. Yeah. I'd love a follow up. Yeah. Um, I, I want to hear if, uh, if, if the, the, have we have we asked this on the podcast before? If you're what? Team Pepsi over Team Coke? Because I want to hear if people are. 
I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. There are uh, there there are definitely a lot of others like you. I'm sure there out are. There. Yeah. There. Let's I'm fight all over the, the place. Let's fight the cola wars again. Yeah, Mitch, much like much like how you want to refight the civil war. <laughs> oh my fucking god! <laughs> right, let's have people refight the cola wars. Jesus, you song. What about you? Are you a, a Coke or Pepsi guy? Uh, what? How? Right. Thumbs hand? up for Coke. Thumbs down for Pepsi. Thumbs up for he's Coke. A, he's a Coke guy all the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, Yamar. Do you have anything you would like to plug? Uh, watch Blackish when it starts to come on again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. Uh, they will do it for this episode of Doughboys. Until next time, for the Spoonman Mike Mitchell, I'm Nick Weiger. Happy eating. See ya. Bye. Feral Audio. Oh, hey there. Hi. Do you like being happy and not sad? You should check out the podcast Hello and Good News. Each week, I sit down with a comedic guest and tell them all about the people, places, and current events affecting the world in a positive way. Whoa. So check out and subscribe to Hello and Good News on iTunes or your favorite podcasting app. Yeah.